Welcome back to another edition of Music Monday from the podcast, Nurture the Mind. I am your host, Cole Poots, and we are here with another, it's not a music reaction today. We are actually going to continue with this whole rabbit hole of Ren. Uh, there have been so many comments. There have been so many views, uptick, and subscribers. I have to say, thank you guys. You got me to over a thousand subscribers, which is the point on YouTube where you can start monetizing your content and making money off of your videos. This has been a dream of mine. I have been working at this since January of 2020. You guys can go back and look at my old videos and my old podcasts. That's when I started. So it took me four years and eight months to get to a thousand subscribers. And really, when I started covering Ren with that first video, Hi Ren, and then I did Sick Boy last week, you guys took the channel from about 508 subscribers to we are almost at 1,100 right now. So I owe everything to you guys for coming over here and supporting me and giving me a chance, just trying to listen to me. I appreciate it so much. I thank you guys so much. And I hope that I can just continue to provide really good content. There's a lot of things that I don't know when it comes to audio, making the audio sound better. So I've seen some of those comments as well. And I hear you guys, this is something that you're gonna have to be patient with me as I try and figure out how to make the audio better, just make overall the quality and the content better. Cause I think the thing that I do best is I, I provide really good thoughts to these reactions, to these videos. Uh, that's kind of my specialty is my philosophical mind. And uh, I just, I don't, I do very basic editing styles on my videos. I'm literally using my phone to record these videos. I don't have a special camera or anything. So I'm gonna have to do my research and look into that stuff. Maybe try and find a friend that's really good at all that audio stuff to come over here and help me improve the quality of the channel. So I uh, just figured I would throw a few things out there. It's funny, I'm addressing a thousand su subscribers on the channel. And actually today, uh, I've seen this suggestion in the comments at least a few times. People are saying, hey, you should check out Ren's video where he's talking about reaching 1 million subscribers and defining success. And I think this is a cool little switch up because the first two weeks of listening to Ren has obviously been musical choices, but I think maybe this will just give me a deeper dive into who he is, find a different appreciation for this man. Obviously, I can kind of get an understanding of who he is through his music, but this will be cool. This will be a switch up is just seeing the man talk, talking about how he's gotten to this moment of a million subscribers, which was you know, he posted this video a year ago. Uh, let's find the, yeah, July 28th of 2023. So essentially just over a year ago. So, you know, now his channel is at 1.47 million subscribers. So uh, it'd be interesting to see how his perspective has shifted since he made this video. But nonetheless, I'm very intrigued. Uh, so far, this has been, like I said, an amazing experience checking out Ren. Uh, I've loved his material so far. I think he's got a very deep analytical mind and those are people that uh, it's easy for me to get along with their message because I consider myself uh, as one of those people as well. I've kind of just always been that way and sometimes it's been hard to relate to other people and to other minds. I think a lot of people kind of sit on the surface level and don't really challenge themselves to think creatively, to think differently. And a lot of people are just boxed into narratives and agendas that are pushed down to them in society, culture, from the media, from government, from the school system. And so I love to see 
creative minds, young minds, like a guy like Ren, who is really breaking down a lot of barriers with his music so far. And it's honestly, these first two songs that I've heard have been very relatable to the human experience and easy to get behind. So uh, without further ado, man, we're going to check out this video. Again, it's him addressing the fact that he hit 1 million subscribers and he's defining what success looks like to him. So uh, let's get into this video, man. I cannot wait. I want to keep it short and sweet because I wrote something that I want to share with you. But um, first of all, I just want to say how grateful I am. Um, I've reached a million subscribers on YouTube, which is flipping a huge milestone. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who supported my music over the years, whether you're newly on board or been here for a while. I want to say thank you to the YouTube reaction community who have gone behind my stuff in a big way and really helped me reach this goal. So thank you guys. Um, yeah, I wanted to read this, this, this passage that I wrote about success. It's too much for me to remember right now, so bear with me, but yeah. Success to me means that I have a responsibility that transcends me. If I have a platform where people are paying attention, then I feel like it's my duty to make that count. It's far more important than my aspirations with music and what I could personally gain. There's a saying that stuck with me recently, which was a rising tide lifts all ships. Somehow, by finding success for myself has meant that I can find success for the people around me, and that makes me feel very rich. I'm in a very strange position right now where I owe much of my success to the most destructive force in my life, which has been the turbulence of my physical and mental illness. The thing that has by far brought me the most pain has been a source of constant, constant inspiration, which ironically led to creations which brought me the most joy. Creating art which means something to somebody else and can potentially be a companion to somebody else in the dark justifies my own pain, and I desperately needed that to be justified. There are a lot of people alive today who live in the dark. It's a place that I'm very familiar with. In the peak of my health problems, I was severely underweight. All my meals had to be restricted and blended, and I was so tired that I couldn't participate in life. I couldn't socialize, I couldn't watch films, I couldn't read. My bones constantly hurt. Even standing in the shower was excruciating and exhausting. And this went on for years, with no answers. Nobody could have ever convinced me during that time that my pain and suffering would be a source for something good because it felt insidious. Nobody could have ever convinced me that something constructive can come from hurting every day. But I'm here to tell you that if you are hurting every day, don't be afraid. One thing I know to be a certain, to be a constant law of the universe, is that life is inconsistent. Life is beautiful and life is hideous. Life is kind and life is cru cruel. Dancing inside this dichotomy and inconsistency makes me know that you won't hurt forever. Whether that comes from resolution of what you're going through or acceptance of where you are, you won't hurt forever. You don't know yet whether or not your pain conceals gold. It definitely conceals wisdom and it's definitely a catalyst for filling you with empathy. So stand strong, my friends, and don't let the darkness consume you. Because once you know the dark and become intimate with it, you become very capable of wielding the light. You could be instrumental for changing this world for the better. There's nothing humble about shrinking or doubting yourself because you are large. You could be ferocious and you could be magnificent. For the medical industry, who too often let people fall through the cracks, it's your duty to do better. For the people living in the light, who have either stepped out of their shadow or have never had to walk beside it, it's your responsibility to pull out, put out untainted love. Our own greed, desire to ferociously expand and decisions rooted in self-interest can benefit ourselves in a material sense, but can be very destructive to the hive and the world around us, ultimately hurting ourselves. So we really must consider that if we're going to step into a bright future. As humans, we have an incredible potential and it would be a shame to throw it away. So community, humanity and changing our relationship with the natural world so it leans more towards homeostasis must be a priority, priority number one. If you're watching this and there's a knot tied up in your stomach with bitterness, anger or hatred for your fellow human being, be with it, feel it. Understand it, express it, and then let it go. You're hurting. Give yourself love. Forgive yourself 
and then project that love outwards and the anger will pass. We have a decision in every interaction to tilt the world towards heaven or hell, towards Jannah or Jahannam, utopia or dystopia, and some people's ideas of heaven will be another's image of hell. So tread carefully, but treat those differences with respect. Tapestries are made beautiful because of the variety in the sum of their parts. <laughs> Thank you to one million people inside this rich tapestry for the opportunity for me to try and spread my own vision of what I believe to be good. And thank you for justifying my pain. Thank you. I love you. All right. That was good. It was quick. Even at five minutes, that felt like it was quick. I don't know, man. I just think that Ren is... He seems like a, an amazing dude. I feel like everything that he says bears a lot of weight. And he kind of talked about that in his thank you. Is that like with his platform, him making music and all of these people that are following him, you know, it's now he, he has a much bigger purpose than he could have ever imagined before. He's got a responsibility you know, to help out other people. It was really cool to see in the beginning, you know, how he talked about how he loves the reaction community on YouTube and they are a big part of his success, you know, talking about his music and then spreading it out to other people. And I just think that is so fucking cool because like I was talking with my coworker, Danny, who is actually, you guys know, she's the one that turned me on to Ren in the first place. And when I told her that I hit a thousand subscribers, you know, I was at that point of like monetization. It's like, but it, it's hard for reactors on YouTube because anytime you're reacting to music on YouTube, making a video, making content, um, you can't monetize that video because of copyright issues. And, and I understand that to a degree but I really wish that it wasn't that way. Cause I, I feel like, you know, being a reactor, you know, if you look at a lot of my videos of me doing reactions, you know, the music is the smallest portion of my video, you know, it's there for three, four, five minutes or whatever. And sometimes it's longer and sometimes it's shorter, but I usually do a deep dive analysis. So my videos end up being for just even reviewing one song, it ends up being 30 minutes in length. And so I don't understand why those videos would get demonetized because it's like, dude, like I'm giving my take, I'm giving my honest thoughts, my honest, transparent thoughts. And if anything, I'm creating more of a conversation around that person's music. So I feel like reactors, especially if they're doing a really good, honest job, should get paid for their efforts because doing all this, like recording the video, uh, editing everything, getting it ready to be posted, like it's not like a fast process. Like it actually takes a while. And like, I have a full-time job outside of this. So I work Monday through Friday as a personal trainer. And then on Saturdays, I always record you know, my next reaction or whatever, the video, whatever I want to post. And then Sunday is spent like doing all of the editing and getting it ready to post. So it's like, dude, in some way, shape or form, I am working seven days, you know, I'm, I'm working the entire week. And so that was really cool to see uh, the appreciation from him that he shared for the reactors um, from the YouTube community and he just seems like such a fucking like humble dude and and uh you know some other things that he kind of like pointed out is that through him going through all of his struggles being in the darkness how it was something that he could have never imagined that it it taught him a lot of wisdom it taught him humility. It, it taught him a lot of life lessons. And then he was able to use that whole experience to basically be a light forward for a lot of people. And basically when people are going through their said struggles, you know, they don't realize um, the amount of gain that they're gonna get from this problem, from this situation. Like I was certainly, one of those people, you know, I've talked about on these two Ren videos that I've done so far, 
and now to be three is that I told you guys about my struggles back in 2019 and that's kind of where everything ramped up and I remember you know it felt like I was sitting in darkness for such a long period of time and certainly I was and of course that is a shitty place to be it fucking sucks you would rather be anywhere else but you know once I like officially got through all of that, like the hardest part, there is this, I guess, like moment of clarity, moment of gain, moment of understanding where you realize that like there was a reason that you went through all of the muck that you did, all of the shit that you did, all of the mud that you did. It's, it's only trying to, life is trying to equip you for what will potentially come in the future. I truly believe that struggles, hardships, just going through things in life, it's it's just to test you as a person. It's to battle test you. Now you could pose the question, you could ask the question, well, Cole, then why do some people have it worse than others? Like I can't even imagine all of the shit that Ren went through, you know, I'm. I, it's hard to like compare struggles. I don't think that we should ever do that because everybody's struggle is hard for them. You know, everybody's hard is going to look a little bit different. I can't imagine going through an experience like that. I mean, I would say the experience that I went through was pretty bad as well. Like I have also experienced derealization, depersonalization. You know, he talked about that in Sick Boy. That was one of the things that he mentioned in his lyrics. But all of our experiences are a little bit different from one another. Some people don't ever struggle with mental health and uh, bless them for that. You know, I, I don't know what that's like because I didn't have that experience. I don't know why I was chosen. I don't know why God chose me and put me through the pain and the punishment that he did. But I don't even know if it's really worth it to ask those questions because I, again, I think once you get out of it and you come to some type of acceptance, you realize that that sort of pain and everything, the frustration that you went through, it can help other people. I mean, he's completely right. You know, he used all of that and he channeled it into music, into art, into creativity. And look at the amount of success that he's had from that. You know, that's actually quite relatable to how I got on YouTube, how I started podcasting. So like I went through my shit in 2019, going through all of that anxiety, depression, OCD, just kind of starting to realize like what my issues were going through a really bad breakup so many things that i could uh point at that i could tap into and so that 2019 2018 2017 i think it started back in 2016 me and my best friend my other best friend dakota phillips we had started uh, a dual podcast that was called the thought observatory but we were very stagnant with uh posting things on our channel like we weren't very consistent with it and so like i go th you know the the years go by 2019 happens all of that shit going on internally i've said before like i had to move from ames iowa because i was going to college at the time stopped going like i was super sick i was throwing up almost every single day i come back to indianola my hometown live with my parents and to start 2020 in the midst of all of the darkness in the midst of all of the chaos i had this revelation i had this vision that i was going to start my own podcast and i was going to start my own youtube channel and you know when i came up with the idea the name nurture the mind that was all dedicated to mental health because of my experience i wanted to shed a light on what i went through in order to hopefully help out other people he said something in there about going through that going through whatever uh certainly in his experience or for anybody watching what their experience has been is you get a lot of empathy for other people when you go through that. And I would say that that is so true. Like if I am ever in a conversation now with somebody, if it's like I've known them for a while or I just met them 
and you know say they they bring up ocd or some mental health struggle dude like i am immediately dialed in to what they're saying so i'm like dude i know exactly what you're talking about i can sympathize i can empathize because i've been there you know if i meet somebody in like they're in a really bad place i can now go to this concrete advice because of what i've been through and say to them hey brother, sister, whoever, I understand that you are struggling right now. I understand that there's a lot that's going on in your head, but take it from me. I've been in a, a similar headspace. I've been, I've gone through similar experiences. I want to tell you right now, as much as the future may seem bleak and dull and non-existent, like you're not going to get there and things aren't going to get better. That is not the truth. You will strive, you will thrive, you will figure out a way to get through this. As so long as you are seeking help, you are putting one foot in front of the other, you are trying to get better. So many ways that you can do that, you know, as far as like self-improvement, going to therapy, you know, doing a deep dive into the self, like turning the mirror on yourself and asking a lot of tough questions. I, I can't point to one thing that I did when I was going through my shit that got me a whole lot better, it's, I don't think it was one thing. I think it was many things that accumulated over time. But if you are committed to that process of getting better and trying to learn from the situation, being humble, looking inward, um, praying, I, I, some people might not believe in that, but I think that's a huge thing that uh, can help out anybody. I know it's certainly helped me in the past. You know, if you can actually dedicate yourself to the process of getting better, then eventually the storms will have to subside. They cannot stay there forever. I know it's it's a cliche to say this, but this cliche is so fucking true that this too shall pass. It's, it's analogous with storms, bad weather. Yeah. It, it happens, you know, it's a part of mother nature. It's a part of our, our ecosystem uh, all across the world, but storms don't stay forever. Usually after a storm, everything clears up and the light comes through. So he just, Ren dropped so many gems in that video. I hope that I'm not missing anything. I, I think I pretty much picked up on everything. I could probably go listen to it one more time and attach myself to a few few more details but it's cool to see him i thought he was just gonna like talk and like kind of go off the cusp like whatever you know thoughts came to him but he actually like wrote something he had something prepared a message that he wanted to prescribe to the people and uh i thought that that was really fucking cool and just watching this and the the first two music reactions that I've done of this man. It just, just gets me hyped to look at more of his stuff. Like, I, I don't know if there would even be anything that I would hate of his because he's got such a great philosophy of life, right? Like he, he alluded to that in high Ren, you know, this dance, this never ending dance that we're going to have to participate with, that we're going to have to get used to. Like that, and I said that in the first video. It's like, that's how we have to interface and interact with the world. Yeah, just the last few things, I caught a few more ideas. I'm not gonna go like super deep into it, but um, you know, he says that with every decision that we make, we're either tilting ourselves and the world at large, either towards heaven or towards hell. I truly believe in that as well. I actually had to remind myself before I came on here and did this reaction and talk to you guys. I, I feel not like a huge sense of pressure, but I just know that like more people are watching me right now. So it's like, it kind of creates this expectation. Like, Hey, like you gotta be on your game. Like, come on, like you gotta, uh, create a great video here, like uh, put out some really good content. And I just had to remind myself, like, what is my intent going into this? Like, I obviously try and always operate with the right intent, the right message, be honest, uh, be authentic, be transparent, because that's, that's what people resonate with. And they can feel that they can eventually people will sift through all of the bullshit. So um, we just 
his message right there, and we don't realize this a lot of times, and we forget this, is that, like, dude, literally with every fucking word that is uttered out of your mouth has the possibility to put more good into the world or put more evil into the world. So you always have to be, like, auditing yourself. Like, where am I at? Like, am I contributing to the good or am I contributing to the bad? And that stuff matters. That stuff accumulates. That stuff spreads. So be very careful with your intent and make sure that if you have any of those negative feelings, jealousy, bitterness, resentment, kind of like he said at the end, is like sit with it, feel it. Like we have to, we can't necessarily suppress these things, but eventually you're going to have to let go of that because that's negative energy and that's just tearing you down. And the other thing that he said that's so important too, kind of again goes back to high Ren, is he talks about how inconsistent life is and how one moment you can be happy, the other moment you can be down, you can be sad, you can have a great week, you can have a bad week, you can have chaos, you can have structure and order, peace, happiness, love, all of that stuff. And it's these are all just like subtle little reminders, but they're powerful reminders because like that his representation of how life is is the same experience that i've had and i think it's the same experience that everybody has is like dude if you mapped out from the moment that you were born or i guess the moment that you really became a conscious being when you were younger like the first memories that you ever had as a child to the moment that you pass away where you're still cognizant um barring the possibility that we might get alzheimer's or dementia or have like some type of brain injury obviously we hope to live like a very long time but if you assess all of those years that you are alive it what's gonna happen it's gonna be a lot of ups and a lot of downs it's going to be wildly inconsistent and if you can just accept if we can all just accept that that is how life is that that's the prevailing theme of life it'll make it a little bit easier to operate in as you go through it instead of having this unrealistic expectation that things have to be great all the time it's like the people that always want to be happy and always want to be carefree it's like what are you talking about man part of the human condition is that sometimes we get fucking annoyed we get pissed off we get stressed i mean dude the world that we live in right now if we're talking about the media and all the conflicts that are going on across the world here in america our political system the race that's coming up this year between donald trump and kamala harris there is obviously a lot of things that we could point to right now that you know if you're not careful and you're taking in this information and, and absorbing it all the time it's going to drive you fucking crazy so he presents this beautiful concise message that hey you the person the individual remember that life is inconsistent things are temporary if you're in uh, a dark place right now again with the proper adjustments moving forward the wanting the willingness to get better you will eventually work through that situation you cannot stay in one place forever unless you become like a professional victim and sure there are a lot of those people that are out there uh, but don't ever become a professional victim because what happens when you do that is it be basically becomes a self fulfilling prophecy that you will live out and you can't escape. But as long as you understand that, hey, bad things happen to nice people, bad things happen to everybody. I am not special. I am not unique. This is a part of life. I will learn from it. I will grow from it. And I can use this wisdom to help other people. I can serve my community. I can serve my family. I can be a better husband. I can be a better son, blah, blah, blah. You fill in the blank. It's it's profound. It's profound, man. And it's refreshing to hear. And it's great to be a part of this community of renegades that, you know, have a similar thought process. I'm glad that I'm not alone. I'm glad that there are, are a lot of other people out in the world uh, that feel the same way. Um, that resonate on this level, that connect on this level. So last little thing I'll say about this reaction video, 1 million subscribers. Uh, I don't know if you guys will notice it on camera, but like when he started crying, when he started tearing up and choking up, like I was kind of feeling it as well. I'm glad he didn't go further into that. He kind of like pulled himself back, but like I was about ready 
to let the tears fall. Like that was just an emotional, raw, vulnerable, real moment right there to witness. So yeah, guys, that's it. That's the reaction. That's the review. Again, thank you guys for all of the support that you've given me. Continue to pile in those suggestions one by one. I will get to them. You guys just be patient with me as I'm patient with this whole process. I only put out one video a week. Maybe here in the future as the channel grows, that will change and I'll put out more. Um, we'll just kind of decide that as, as time goes on. We'll just go with the flow. We'll just see what happens. Uh, the parting thoughts that I always give to you guys, four things. If you could help me out on the channel, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Comment in the comment section below. Uh, love hearing from you guys. Love getting your feedback and then share the message if you could. And then last little thing, you'll notice uh, in the pinned comment that I have the supplement links for first form. So those are products that I use. And then there's also a separate link where it's just like general, it's just a general website link. So you could start there. And if there were any other products that you were curious about, then you could take a deeper dive once you get onto the website. So if you guys are interested in bumping up your supplement game, I recommend heavily that you go check out First Form. They have great products. But anyways, guys, that's the video. That's the podcast. That's the reaction. I thank you once again for coming over here and listening to me babble and talk. I love you guys, and I will see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.